morning. So we're just here on the Greater Ooze Boating Association, or GOBA, moorings just above the lock on the River Cam, a few miles out of Cambridge. Next lock that way is Jesus Lock. Uh, so named, I think, for Jesus College, which sits beside the lock, which is part of Cambridge University. Um, though I could be wrong. That way, several miles, Cambridge. Joe, that way, several miles, Cambridge, right now. Uh, she had to go into Cambridge to get her jab, her second vaccine. So, we are in the process of trying to figure out what to do, and we talk about, you know, should I move ahead to the next moorings, which are the bridge moorings, which were full on the day that we arrived, but we thought maybe there'd be something today. However, Joe walked by there. There's no space there today, unless in the process of me moving down there, we get passed by a, um, higher boat coming this way. As it's the only one pointed in the right direction, or somebody else moves off from there. So if I'm super lucky, if Joe and I, George, well, Joe's, Joe's off somewhere else. If George and I are super lucky, then we're going to find a mooring at the bridge, uh, just maybe a kilometer and a half away. We're going to drive for that. If there's no space on the bridge moorings, which there may not be, because we see several boats going this way and no boats coming this way in the last couple of days, as we've been sitting here, we will proceed further to the next go of moorings, which are the last option before Cambridge, so if there's nobody there, I will call Joe. Joe will stay in Cambridge. I will go down to Cambridge. <laughs> ah, good fun. So it's not particularly complicated, but uh, it does involve me moving on my lonesome today. Um, and it appears that the boat behind me is getting moving as well, so I'm going to move now. Right. See you in a bit. Just along from the Gober Moorings is the Cam Sailing Club, and then beyond that is the Cambridge Motorboat Club. On the far side of all the private moorings at the Motorboat Club is the Bridge Hotel pub. You can moor here for 24 hours when you eat at the pub, and they're pretty nice moorings. On the far side of the river is the Cam Conservancy Depot. The conservators of the River Cam have been around since 1702 and are responsible for keeping the river navigable. The foreman's residence was built here in 1842 and it was used by the conservators for their meeting. There's a workshop here now and the conservators still have an office here. The Clayhithe Bridge links the village of Waterbeach with the hamlet of Clayhithe, and just beyond the bridge are the public moorings where Michael was hoping to stop. Okay, the bridge moorings were completely full. Um, there's a longer boat that people look like they were heading off uh, for the day, uh, probably more than the day, probably more than like a week based on the amount of stuff they were carrying, but I don't know. Uh, but they were they were leaving the boat. They weren't, you know, getting on the boat, as far as I could tell. So, you know, they were either arriving back from a couple of weeks off or they were leaving for a couple of weeks. I think they were leaving for a couple of weeks, one way or another, doesn't really know. Um, and then there's a couple of boats that don't look like they've moved probably in months, but you know, who knows, maybe they have. Anyway, proceeding forward to the Gobo moorings as uh, that's my next possible action field of cows over here. It is a lovely river. It's nice to see everybody. Oh, there's a heron right there. So, yeah. uh, it's a lovely river. Nice to see. Uh, not a lot of rowers out, which is good for us in terms of stability. Um, but uh, yeah, apparently they come up here quite a bit during events and everything. Right, so here's to see whether or not the Gobo Mornings are open. George is uh, less than enthusiastic about this trip so far.
the gable moorings have just come into view and there's a boat moored there but thankfully there's enough room for perseverance too. Alright, I've arrived at the Gobo Moorings where there's one other boat space. There are room for two boats here. That's it. Um, had to press the bridge moorings. Misjudged the bridge moorings. Turns out that so there were two boats at the pub and then there was a bunch of boats on the bridge moorings and there was one green boat which when I first drove up I thought, oh, maybe they're leaving. But when I got there, there was a woman at the back who had this big load of like laundry and stuff and was standing there looking at her phone. She looked like she was waiting for whoever was inside. Uh, I was like, hi, but she was busy with her phone, so she didn't notice me. So fair enough. Uh, but I was like, oh, they got this large amount of baggage on the back. She's not obviously moving to move the stuff in. Uh, the person on the inside looks like they're doing some last minute cleaning. So I was just like, oh, they must be leaving. I get here. I do all the rigmarole of tying up. Not exactly simple because of the locations of the bars and stuff. And, uh, and, and George. And I get everything done. I get George inside. I get ready to film. I call Joe, tell her I'm moored up and everything, where I'm moored up and stuff. And the green boat passes me with uh, the, the um, women inside and apparently all of their luggage and everything. So, so my bad for misjudging that. One way or another, uh, there is now a spot back on the bridge mooring, so if you happen to be going back there today, which, you know, by the time you see this, you won't be, but anyway, there'll be a mooring there. Joe's gone ahead and was checking the moorings in Cambridge just in case there wasn't a mooring here. She found two spots down there, so those two spots will be taken up by the three boats moving that way. So, you know, <laughs> one way or another, it was the red call moving up over here. Uh, I also checked our internet speeds. It's the best we've had since Boston. Must be getting quite close to Cambridge. So that's good, uh, as that will allow us a couple of days of catching up, uploading, downloading, etc. Because we haven't been able to upload a thing uh, in the last two days. We haven't been able to watch any uh, Netflix or engage in any of my research or work or anything. So, you know, we've just been watching a couple of DVDs, which was worth it. Although i got to say Ridley Scott's uh, Robin Hood was not as good as, as uh, the one with that American fella in it. Um, yeah, which was campier. I, I don't know. I think Robin Hood needs to be campier. Anyway, that's my judgment on Robin Hood. I'm a little heat delirious. I'm a little bit tired. And I now have to wash a whole bunch of table salt off the uh, front of the boat. This is a long story, but um, where we were moored up, there is lots of grass. The grass had lots of slugs and snails. And we noticed them walking around, and we're like, aha, you know, this is, this is interesting, but it won't affect us. And then came out yesterday morning and found some slugs on the boat. I was like, uh-oh, well, I'm going to have to get those off before Joe sees them. So I was like, pulling them off and throwing them and everything. And uh, not that Joe's, you know, I just didn't want her to worry about it. Um, so I took care of them, threw them off, went out, walked George, came back, found that they were down the side of the boat. So I went down the side of the boat using George's chucker to sort of peel them off the boat, throw them back into the grass. Um, you know, didn't think too much of it, but then told Joe about it. <laughs> and she was like, are they going to try and come in the grate or anything? And I'm like, no, 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 they're not going to try to come in the grate. You know, they were just kind of crawling around the front, no big deal. Uh, well, then I went to walk George last night and brought the light out. And, uh, and sure enough, <laughs> there was some slime on the grate, so they were trying to get in the grate. Uh, or at least they were going across the grate on, on our door. So came out here and found like a full dozen slugs. Uh, big, big brown uh, slugs, big black slugs, little tiny little ones. They were all over the front of the boat. So I spent like a whole bunch of time peeling off the boat and throwing them on the inside and stuff. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to keep these things off. So I made a trail of salt. Uh, I don't want to harm the slugs. You know, fair enough. It's, it wasn't a garden. It's their, it's their, uh, uh, well, um, Armageddon survival population. I mean, there were millions of the things. But, uh, but by putting the salt on there, I, I kept them off for the night, which is good. 
because there was no slugs in this part of the boat when I got in the morning. There were some down the side, but you know, again, I just took George's chucker and went peel the slug, throw the slug, peel the slug, throw the slug. <sighs> got us off, moved over here, but now the front of my boat is covered in salt, so now I have to grab some water out of the river and wash off the salt. All oh, the things you have to do when you're living on a boat. When you're living in a house, you don't normally think about taking a trail of salt down one of your eaves or anything, but, uh, but you know, life fucked. So anyway, Joe's down in Cambridge still. She'll be back in a couple of hours. George is inside. I am done as soon as I wash this stuff off. So thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribe to Minimalist Maximal Velocity if you want our time-lapse videos. And ring that bell if you want to get notifications. George, what have we found? Huh? He's a bunker. Shall we go investigate? Investigate, George. Investigate. What do you think, George? Shall we investigate? It's sticky outy bits, George. Also some graffiti. Alright. Investigated? Well done.